This problem and all other Calc 152 problems can be found here at Sarai Studies. Link is in the description box below. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my cheat sheet for my exam. As in, as soon as I get my paper, I flip the exam on the back and I derive everything from my brain. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I split this into derivatives and integrals. So the first thing, the most basic derivatives are the sine and cosines, and I can do that with this little trick. So everything starts with Sarai, because my name is Sarai, so that's how I remember it. And then everything's symmetrical, and then CC. So it's really sine and cosine. Down is negative, this is at the bottom. Being at the bottom is bad. Right is good, because you're always right, so being left is bad, bad, negative. And then down for derivative. So I start with Sarai, like at the top. And then from there, down for derivative, D for down. So the derivative of sine is cosine of x. And then you just continue that same direction. So then if I want to know the derivative of cosine, it's going to be negative sine of x. And derivative of negative sine of x is going to be negative cosine of x. And derivative of negative cosine of x is going to be sine of x and so on. And what's beautiful about this is that not only does it give you the derivative, the opposite direction is the antiderivative. So if you have cosine of x, the antiderivative of that is sine of x, and then plus c, of course, because it's indefinite integral, no bounds. So those are your basic derivatives and integrals taken care of in one thing. And then the other types of derivatives are your tangents, cotangents, secants, and so on. So these I use the box, so tangent and cotangent are literally always together. And then everything starts with sarai, so secant. I'm really sorry, that's literally just how I remember it because my name is Sarai. And then after this, it's what's left, which is cosecant. And then the only difference is that there's a negative here. So in other words, if I ask you, what's the derivative of tangent of x? You look at this box, whatever's left is your derivative. You see secant two times, that's secant squared of x. If I ask you, what's the derivative of cotangent of x? Cotangents here, whatever's left in its row is two cosecants and there's a negative there. So negative cosecant squared of x. If I asked you what's the derivative of cosecant of x, you would select cosecant and then whatever's left is your derivative. So that would be negative cosecant of x times cotangent of x and so on. So you have a whole bunch of derivatives and integrals here. Here you're free to use derivatives and integrals all the way. Here, absolutely derivatives, you can do it all the way. But for integrals, you can only use this box for double integrals, and I'll, I'll get to that when I get to that. But these are your basic trick functions. You also have to find derivatives of inverse trick functions. So for that, I just remember S, T, S, so S, T, S. So it's sine of X, tangent of X, secant of X, and they're all inverse. That's the whole point, and we're finding the derivative of these. Because we already know what the derivative of sine of x is. Down for derivative, it's cosine of x. These are the inverse derivatives. So they're all fractions. And then if I see an s, that means s for square root. So square root starts with an s. So s for square root over here as well. And then s also for subtraction inside the square root. Now t... T is kind of like a plus sign, right? So there's going to be a plus sign. And then what goes on the top is always just the derivative of what's on the inside. So these are the same. And then it's just 1 and then x squared. 1, x squared. And here you just flip it's x squared and then 1. But the only difference with this one is you do the absolute value of x as well. Now if you go back to my exam paper, you can see I only ever did these because they told us that these are the only ones we needed. But for the sake of it, we can also find the other ones. So what is sine's partner? It's cosine. So inverse cosine of x. What is tangent's partner? Cotangent. Inverse cotangent of x. And then what is secant's partner? Cosecant. And again, we're trying to find the derivatives of these. And guess what? They are literally the exact same thing. You just add a negative. That's it. That's the only thing. But on the review packet, they told us we don't need to know those. So I only ever bother with these, especially this one. I'm going to tell you right now, if there's one thing that you should know going to a test, is this. I'll leave it at that. Then let's get into integrals. So I like to separate this into two parts. So double integrals and single integrals. So the way that I remember it is S, C, S, C. So survive with Christ, survive with Christ. And double, right? Because double integrals. So then S, C, S, C. And then none of these are the basic ones. So in my mind, like the sines, cosines are like always basic. And then everything else is just not basic. So secants, cosecants, whatever. So these won't be the sines and cosines. So this is going to be whatever other one is s, which is secant of x. And we're taking integrals now. And because these are doubles, it's just going to be squared. In other words, it's really just secant of x, but we can simplify that to just be squared. And remember to add your dx, and then here we have cosecant squared of x, also dx. And then here, it just repeats the same thing. So it's secant of x 
cozy can of x but these are not singles like you can't just leave these like these it has to have another one and so the one that goes here is tangent of x dx and the one that goes here is the partner of tangent always is cotangent of x and these you already get from these i just do these in this format because it actually helps me get what i need over here and you'll see what i'm talking about in a second but these secant squared of x the integral if you see two secants what's left tangent so then it's just going to be tangent of x plus c what's the integral of cosecant squared of x well, two cosecants there's a negative and a cotangent left it's going to be negative cotangent of x plus c secant and a tangent secant and a tangent what's left a secant cosecant and a cotangent cosecant and a cotangent what's left a negative cosecant so these you already have just by looking at this this is what i meant for this box only working with double integrals and i guess the way that you can remember that tangent comes here is knowing that this box just represents all of the integrals that you can get from here so if you already know that this is secant squared of x so you took care of these two you're left with this and if this has a secant that means that we have a secant but we can't select secant again because that would just be this right so then the only thing that's left to select would be tangent so secant tangent and then what's left secant and then these are always partners and then i use these to find the more interesting ones so we're going to start with two basic ones so i'm going to move this up here we're going to do the integral of the basic one so sine of x dx integral of cosine of x dx so sine cosine that's the order you learn trig right that's how i remember it. it's always sine cosine tangent and these are basic ones you can get these from here what's the integral of sine of x well it's down for derivative so you would go the opposite way for the integral for sine of x opposite way is negative cosine of x and then plus c because it's an indefinite integral what's the integral of cosine of x well cosine of x go this way it's sine of x plus c and then this is the fun part these four are correlated with the four over here so i'm going to move this down a bit so you want to keep these two kind of above and then these connected with the four over here so the one that comes after you have sine you have cosine now it's tangent right that's literally the way that you learned your trick sine cosine tangent so tangent of x dx and guess what comes next tangents partner that's always cotangent of x and then guess what comes next this is in the same line as this one so it's going to be secant of x dx and then guess what's going to go here this one. and then what's beautiful about these last four is that they all have ln absolute value plus c 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 and here's a more beautiful thing these two go in these two so whatever you got here you plug that in here except the negative the negative goes on the outside and you just have cosine of x like so and then here you have sine of x so that's going to go here that's it and then for these you use the box but instead of multiplying we add go to secant what's left secant and tangent so then you're going to do secant of x and then plus tangent of x so you found secant and then what's left was secant of x plus tangent of x then here cosecant of x what's left negative cosecant and cotangent so you can take out the negative on the outside cosecant of x plus cotangent of x so you had cosecant and you were left with negative cosecant cotangent the negative is right there at the outside and this is what i meant by the fact that you can't use this box for singles of the non-basic trig so this is a single non-basic this is a single non-basic also single non-basic you're using it here but it's not the same like you're adding and for these two they're based on these so i can't be like oh look at tangent what's left secant it's not secant squared see so that's what i meant so for this you can use for derivatives integrals no worry about it but this you can only use for double so square or you literally see two of them and then you use these and these two so these you get from this and this you get from this to help you solve the more particular ones and then since i don't really need this i'm just going to delete it and i'm going to show you the pythagorean stuff so first things first is the basics so we have sakatoa the s stands for sine c here stands for cosine t here stands for tangent then if you take the inverse the opposite so h o and then h a and so c here s here so this is secant this is cosecant and then obviously the partner of tangent is always cotangent it's in the name so this is the other part that they never showed you so this is cosecant secant tangent cotangent you also have to recall that if we have sine of x then when i say one over sine of x 
one over something means opposite of that something. Opposite means inverse. So if I'm asking you what's the opposite of sine, that's cosecant. So that's the same as cosecant of x. Take tangent of x, one over tangent of x. One over something is the opposite of that something. What's the opposite of tangent of x? Cotangent. So that's equal to cotangent of x. So it's just playing around. But the real thing you really need to know is the Pythagorean identities. The way that I remember is the equation of the circle. What's the equation of the circle? We'll just start with, you know, your x and y plus equal one and then just add squares. And then recall that in a unit circle, if you plot any point, it's always cosine and then sine x and then y. And I remember it that way because C comes before S in the alphabet, A, B, C, and then S comes after. So X is cosine, and then you can replace Y with sine. And that's it. That's your first identity. And then to get to the other ones, you would just have to divide. Maybe I can choose to divide by cosine squared of X first, or sine of X. It doesn't matter, as long as you divide by both at one point in time. So let's do cosine squared of X. This becomes a 1. And then for this one, you would have to know that sine over cosine is tangent. But if you don't remember that, you can just use this. Just translate to what you know. What is sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. What's cosine? Cosine is A over H. So divided by cosine, which is A over H. And then we don't like fractions in the denominator, do we? So we want to cancel it out by just multiplying by the reciprocal on both sides. And so these cancel out. You're left with just one in the denominator. And then these cancel out and you're just left with O over A. And guess what's O over A? Tangent. So it's not like you have to memorize anything, honestly. If anything fails, you have these little nice hacks that you can try. So this would be tangent and squared because everything is squared x. And then one over something is the opposite of that something. What's opposite? Inverse. So if I want the inverse of cosine, it's just secant. And then it's squared because the whole thing is squared. And that's it. Now you have your first two. And then to get to the other one, you just divide by what you haven't divided by yet, which is sine squared of x. So this one easy becomes one. This one, remember, one over something is just the opposite of that something. So the opposite of sine is cosecant. So that's cosecant and then squared of x. And then this one, there's a couple ways you can think about it. If you know that sine over cosine is tangent and you're given cosine over sine, what are these opposites? So if this is equal to tangent, and this is the opposite of tangent then, then what's the opposite of tangent? What's the inverse of tangent? Cotangent. So this would be cotangent squared of x. Or you can just be like, well, what's cosine? Cosine is a over h, then divided by what's sine? Sine is over. And then we don't like fractions in the denominator, so we multiply by the reciprocal on both sides because whatever you do on one side you have to do the other these cancel out you're just left with one and so these cancel out and you're left with a over o and what's a over o cotangent which is why we have cotangent here so different ways you can think about it and that's it these are your three pythagorean identities so this is what i used in exam one and exam two but for exam two we also had to know trig sub but i do have a video on how to derive the triangles so you don't have to memorize them but you do have a lesson on trig integrals and you'll have to know some other formulas like double and half angle formulas i haven't done a video on that yet but i will but i did leave a note on how to kind of think about it and then for exam three, you will also have to know the Maclaurin series, and I already recorded a video, I just have to edit it, and once I do, it's going to be posted right over here in the Maclaurin series post under Sarai Studies. And that's pretty much it for this video, I'll see you in the next. Bye!